When the new moon is sighted for the month of Ramadan, a Muslim who has reached the age of Islamic maturity should make an intention to fast a whole month for the sake of Allah's pleasure. Qurbatan ilallah. If you have a doubt it is the first day of Ramadan or the last day of Sha'ban, it's better to fast with the intention of a Qadha fast or a recommended fast. And if later on you find out that it was the first day of Ramadan, you must make the intention of the fast of Ramadan and continue fasting. So what breaks a fast? A fast is broken if someone does any of the following intentionally between the time of Fajr to the time of Maghrib. Eating and drinking. If a person eats or drinks intentionally, their fast is void. What about brushing your teeth? Yes, you can brush your teeth when you are fasting as long as you don't swallow the toothpaste or the water. Also, swallowing your saliva does not invalidate your fast. Injections and IV drips vary between the jurists. Please refer back to your marja for more details. Asthma sprays do not break the fast as long as it enters the lungs. Eye drops and ear drops do not invalidate your fast. These rules may vary from jurist to jurist. Please refer to your Islamic laws book for more details. Causing dust to reach the throat will invalidate your fast. This does not include normal dust in the air, but it is thick and heavy, like smoke from the exhaust of a truck, and it reaches the throat. Then based on obligatory precaution, it breaks the fast. Also based on obligatory precaution, a person should not smoke. Vomiting intentionally, like putting one's fingers down the throat, breaks a fast. However, if one is ill and throws up, it does not break their fast. Lying about Allah and the Prophet and the Imams. If you intentionally ascribe a lie, whether verbal or in writing and etc., then besides the sin you commit, based on obligatory precaution, your fast is broken. If there is something about which you are not sure whether it is true or not, like a hadith, we should either not narrate it, or if we do, we should quote the source. Immersing your head under water. If a person dives into water, or even just immerses his or her head into water intentionally, their fast is void. Some have said it is highly makruh, and as a measure of precaution should be avoided. Taking a shower does not break a fast. Intimacy and masturbation will also break a fast. Remaining in a state of janaba or hayd to fajr prayers, if a person enters a state of janaba during the night, they must make sure to perform ghusl before fajr. If they fail to do so deliberately, their fast is void. Similar to when a woman is in hayd or menstruation. Please follow your Islamic laws book for more specifics. Liquid enema used for relief from constipation, relief from gas and bloating and etc. will invalidate the fast. Here are some makruh acts while fasting. Putting medication in the eyes in a way that the taste or smell reaches the throat. Doing anything that causes weakness, like giving blood. Putting medication in the nose. But if you know it will reach the throat, it is not permitted. Smelling fragrant plants. Having your teeth extracted or doing anything that causes blood to come out of your mouth. If we miss a wajib fast for any reason, there could be three outcomes. The first outcome is when you have to pay a compensation of about 750 grams of food, like barley and bread, in exchange for each fast missed. This is called fidya. For example, those with long-term illness and do not expect to be able to fast for a long time have to pay fidya per fast missed to the poor and they do not have to worry about redoing the fast. The second outcome is when you have to compensate a missed fast. This is called qadah. This is for those that break their fast due to temporary illness or traveling or menstruation. You must compensate for each day missed. But if you did not do the Qadr fast before the next Ramadan, you also have to give about 750 grams of food to the poor for each day missed. The third outcome is when you have to pay a penalty or kafara for intentionally missing your fast. Then they must A. Ask Allah for forgiveness for the sin committed. B. 
compensate for the missed fast as qada and c either feed 60 poor people or fast for 60 days or free a slave for each fast that was broken intentionally according to some scholars if you deliberately break your fast on haram for example haram food or haram drink and etc your kafara will be all three of feeding 60 poor people fasting for 60 days and freeing of a slave question if you intentionally broke your fast for example on food and then later on you ate and drank again do you have to pay multiple kafaras no one kafara is sufficient who are those exempted from fasting some have said the elderly people who cannot fast at all there is no qada or fidya for them elderly people who can fast but with great hardship there is no qada for them however they have to pay a fidya for each day missed those who cannot fast due to a temporary illness like a fever a severe cold or an infection and etc such people are exempted from fasting however they have to do a qada they pay a fidya if it is not done before next ramadan also those who cannot fast due to a long-term illness such people are exempted from fasting there is no qada for them either however they have to pay a fidya for each day of fasting a pregnant or a nursing woman if fasting would harm her or the child's health then she is exempted from fasting however she has to do qada after pregnancy or weaning of the child and also pay fidya for each day of fasting.